Okay, so let's get to, what is this, day 18 now? <sighs> Time has no meaning anymore. Donald Trump's lawyers accused the prosecution's star witness in his hush money trial of lying to jurors, portraying Trump fixer turned foe Michael Cohen on Thursday as a serial fabulist who is bent on seeing the presumptive Republican presidential nominee behind bars. As Trump looked on, defense attorney Todd Blanche pressed Cohen for hours with questions that focused as much on his misdeeds as on the case's specific allegations and tried to sow doubt in jurors' mind about Cohen's crucial testimony implicating the former president. And I have to admit, that is something that concerns me. Blanche's voice rose as he interrogated Cohen with phone records and text messages over Cohen's claim that he spoke by phone to Trump about the hush money payments to porn actor Stormy Daniels that is at the heart of the case, days before wiring her lawyer $130,000. <coughs> Blanche said that was a lie, confronting Cohen with texts indicating that what was on his mind, at least initially, during the phone call were harassing calls he was getting from an apparent 14-year-old prankster. Cohen said he believed he also spoke to Trump about the Daniels deal. Um, what? We are not asking for your belief. This jury does not want to hear what you think happened, Blanche said his voice growing even louder, prompting an objection from the prosecutor. Yeah, apparently Todd Blanche is taking things personally, which you can't do as a lawyer. The heated moment was the crescendo of defense cross-examination over two days designed to portray Cohen, a one-time Trump loyalist who has become one of his biggest foes as a media-obsessed opportunist who turned on the former president after he was denied a White House job. Which that part is totally new to me. Whether the defense is successful in undermining Cohen's testimony could determine Trump's fate in the case. Over the course of the trial's fourth week of testimony, Cohen described for jurors meetings and conversations he said he had with Trump about the alleged scheme to stifle stories about sex that threatened to torpedo Trump's 2016 campaign. Now, they glossed over it, but a previous version of this article showed text about how he could have been potentially um, Trump's chief of staff. So, but he also said he didn't want to work in the White House, so I have no idea. Prosecutors have tried to blunt the defense attacks on their star, witnesses, star witness by getting him to acknowledge at the outset his past crimes, including a guilty plea for lying to Congress about work he did on a Trump real estate deal in Russia. So if they've already acknowledged it, the prosecution was fine with acknowledging that this is a thing that happened. Why, is, why are the defense hounding him for it? That's already been established, so what do they think they're accomplishing? But the cross-examination underscored the risk of prosecutors' reliance on Cohen. They're not relying on Cohen, who was pe peppered repeatedly with questions about his criminal history and past lies. Cohen also testified that he lied under oath when he pleaded guilty to federal charges, including tax fraud in 2018. They're not relying on him. He, it's not like he's the only witness they called. He is corroborating what other witnesses have said. Now, if he were the only witness or the very first witness, yeah, you could bring that into question, but other witnesses have said similar things. It was a lie, correct? Blanche asked Cohen about whether he lied to the late U.S. District Judge William H. Pauley III at a court hearing about not being pressured into pleading guilty. Correct, Cohen said. 
Trump's team also attacked Cohen's motivations and elicited testimony designed to support the defense's argument that Trump was a victim of extortion by Keith Davidson, a crucial witness, and the lawyer who negotiated hush money deals for two women. Cohen acknowledged telling a former prosecutor that he felt Daniels and Davidson were extorting Trump in seeking the $130,000 payment to keep quiet about her claim of a sexual encounter with Trump. The fact that Cohen is being upfront about his prior convictions should make him more seem more truthful now. Because, yes, he lied then, but he's being honest about it now. This guy, So it's not like he's a pathological liar. That would be Trump. Yes, I recall making a statement like that, that they were extorting, extorting Mr. Trump, Cohen told jurors. He's by far prosecutor's most important witness, placing Trump directly at the center of the alleged scheme to silence women who claim to have had sexual encounters with Trump. Trump denies the women's claims. Cohen told jurors that Trump promised to reimburse him for the money he fronted and was constantly updated about behind-the-scenes efforts to bury stories feared to be harmful to his 2016 campaign. Cohen also matters because the reimbursements he received from the ba formed the basis of 34 felony counts charging Trump with falsifying business records. Prosecutors say the reimbursements were logged falsely as legal expenses to conceal the payment's true purpose. Um, and of course, Trump claims, well, I'll get into it. Trump, who insisted the prosecution is an effort to damage his campaign, to reclaim the White House, says the payments to Cohen were properly categorized as legal expenses because Cohen was a lawyer. Right, and so every conversation you have with a lawyer is legal advice. Um, no, asking him how his family is does not constitute legal advice. So, no, not every payment to a lawyer means legal expenses. I mean, technically true, but he wasn't doing lawyer stuff, so not legal expenses. The defense has suggested they was trying to protect his family, not his campaign, by squelching what he says were false, scurrilous claims. Uh, if they were false, why do you need to protect your family from them? I mean, you could just say, like, especially if it's something from the National Enquirer, Oh, yeah, that, that's just trash, that, you know, that's just a rumor that that didn't happen. But, you know, if it's false, you don't need to squelch it. It might be uncomfortable, but if you're being honest, and if you are an honest person, your family would believe you. So either he is saying that his family would believe him because he's, always lies, which is true, or this or this story was true. I mean, it can't be both. The crime is that they're doing this case, Trump told reporters Thursday before entering the courtroom, flanked by a group of congressional allies, or the Brain Dead Brigade, that included Representative Matt Gates. Republican from Florida, and Representative Lauren Boebert, Republican from Colorado, and Representative Bob Good, Republican from Virginia, the chairman of the Hard Right House Freedom Caucus. The Hard Right Republican lawmakers stood outside the courthouse and railed against a kangaroo court and the case amplifying the former president's attacks on the judicial system as they were heckled but also cheered by the crowd. The former president has been joined at the courthouse in recent days by a slew of conservative supporters, including some considered potential vice presidential picks and others are angling for future administration roles. And, of course, they're doing what Trump can't do because he's under a gag order. So they're just finding a way around it. 
Among those at the courthouse Thursday were Republican members of the House Oversight Committee, which delayed a hearing on an effort to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress so the lawmakers could appear alongside Trump in Manhattan. Is, it, is that the reason or the fact that um, President Biden declared executive privilege on a recording with his of an interview with Robert Herr that Republicans are trying to use as evidence to um, to hold him in contempt. I don't know. Blanche confronted Cohen with profane social media posts, a podcast, and books he wrote about the former president, getting Cohen to acknowledge that he has made millions of dollars off slamming Trump. In one clip played in court Thursday, Cohen could be heard using an expletive and saying he truly hopes that this man ends up in prison. Uh, a lot of people think that, so, okay. It won't bring back the year that I lost or the damage done to my family, but revenge is a dish best served cold, cold, Cohen was heard saying. You better believe that I want this man to go down. Cohen acknowledged he has continued to attack Trump even during the trial. In one social media post cited by the defense attorney, Cohen called Trump an alliterative and expl an explicit nickname. I like alliteration. Come on, tell us what it was. As well as an orange-crusted ignoramus. I'm sorry, that's hilarious. Asked if he used the phrase, Cohen responded, sounds correct. <laughs> oh my god, orange-crusted ignoramus. Um, probably still not as good as some of the words, insults that the Scots have co had come up with for Trump when he decided to claim that Scotland voted for Brexit, which they did not. The UK as a whole did, but Scotland in particular did not. And, yeah, I, oh, they had some real doozies, which I can't think of at the moment. Cohen, prosecutor's final witness, at least for now, is expected to return to the witness stand Monday. The trial will take Friday off so Trump can attend the high school graduation of his youngest son, Barron. And I put that in quotes because he it's already been announced that he's going to be at a fundraiser or a rally, something, that has nothing to do with Barron's graduation. So unless he plans to do both, which I highly doubt, I mean, I'm sure people are going to be on Barron graduation watch to see if Trump actually goes. But, you know, the judge can't assume that he's not going to go. So, he called Trump's bluff, and we're going to see what happens next. All right. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office has said it will rest its case once Cohen is done on the stand, though it could have an opportunity to call rebuttal witnesses if Trump's lawyers put on witnesses of their own, which as of now, we are led to believe they're not going to call any witnesses. So, but yeah. The defense isn't obliged, um, the defense isn't obligated to call any witnesses, and it's unclear whether the attorneys will do so. Trump's lawyers have said they may call Bradley A. Smith, a Republican who was appointed by former President Bill Clinton to the Federal Election Commission to refute the prosecution's contention that the hush money payments amounted to campaign finance violations. Okay, and that is all I have for that article. Initially, they were going to call him, but last I heard, they decided against it. So, I don't know. Maybe they still will, maybe they won't. We'll find out on Monday. So, anyway, that is all I have for this article. 
And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.